Hi there guys, Ian here, and today I'm bringing you another Cinema 4D tutorial. Uh, this one is about the latest intro I made. Um, if we get it up over here, you can see we have uh, this object kind of coming in, uh, folding over, all in different colours, and then eventually folding in. Now you can see here that we have holes in them with these little loops. I'm not going to be showing you how to make that. Uh, that's simply by using a ball um, object and just cutting cylinders out so I won't be showing you that today but what we want to do is come into Cinema 4D to, uh, here go into the splines, insert a rectangle uh, the size is fine, we're just going to press C on our keyboard to make it editable go over to the point mode get the selection tool up and just delete one of the edges so we have this um, half rec uh, half square here and then we want to select just this point here and then right click chamfer and just drag it out so we get a nice curve there then go to the other two points chamfer and just a little bit and then we'll drop this object into an extrude nerves and we'll just decrease this down to about three just so we have a nice object to work with here next we just want to rotate this round um, uh, minus 135 degrees just so we do have this object here uh, the right way round and then if we go into this view here and if we click on the axis modification we'll just zero this just so the whole object um, now rotates around this point here okay so now what we want to do is just put this into a fracture object uh, you can hold down alt and it'll automatically put it underneath or you can just drag it under when you insert it okay so now on the fracture object we want to go to effector and plane and as long as you have this highlighted when you go into the effector it will automatically uh, put it in the effectors tab here. If not, and it doesn't do anything, just drag the plane effector into the effectors here. Then in the effector, we want to uncheck position and in the rotation, uh, just find out which one makes it flap either side like that. And we just want to put it to 180. So now if we play with the strength, you can see it does what we want. So in the fall off we want to go to shape and linear and we just want to make this in the y direction. So now if we move through it like this it moves up and down. So we want to have it at a place where it's not doing anything and make a keyframe on the position of the plane effector then go to somewhere like 30 and move it so it's all the way up. So now if we play through, we have it moving up and down. So next what we want to do is group these two. So just press Alt G and we have a group here. So if we call this plane. And a good tip is just to check the traffic light on the plane just so it looks a little bit neater. It won't affect the scene at all. So next what we want to do is put this into a cloner again holding down alt or just drag it in next we want to change the amount offset to 0 and increase the count to about 10 it won't look like it's doing anything until we go uh, have the cloner selected go to MoGraph effector step and change this, uh, uncheck the scale and just change the time offset to around 12 so now we have this effect here 
and this is more or less exactly what I did. Now to give it different colors, so if I just make a red, yellow, blue, we'll just have these three here. If we put it onto the cloner, as you can see, it's all the same color, which isn't quite what we want. Um, if we just put it onto the uh, plane here and just duplicate this three times, but keep it in the cloner and just move this here, you can see now we have different objects. And if we go to the cloner object in the clones, we can select random if we want a random selection of color, and you can flick through with the seed to change it to however you want um, or you can uh, have sort but that won't do too much or iterate where we'll just um, the first one will be um, yellow then red blue and then back to yellow again and so this is the basic effect of what I did and then on the final one if I load up the scene Oh, no, this was just another one that I did. Um, if I load up the actual scene which I used, we can see the actual object actually looks. If I just take one of these into a new scene. Um, well, anyway, um, you can see each one here is actually cut out a little. <coughs> oh, bless me. You can see each one of the rectangles is actually cut out and we just have this simple uh, loop here uh, which goes through to kind of give it a fake um, kind of ring look through it. Um, a lot of my inspiration I took from this um, was actually from the More 4 um, Ident, uh, their newest one. Uh, if you look it up, it's really good. I'll leave a link to the description um, for the video. It's great to see them do it, uh, especially if you watch the making of. So I hope this technique has been useful. Um, it can be used for um, many things. It doesn't just have to be this. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoy it. And if you do like it, just make sure to leave a comment below and a like and subscribe for more tutorials. Uh, I'll see you later on. This has been Ian and thanks for watching.